Good evening, everyone. I am Laura Seip, the Director of Strategic Engagement and Alumni Relations for the College of Engineering. And while many of us wish that we could be gathering either at the Ohio Stadium or maybe around our own televisions this Saturday to watch the Buckeyes beat that state up north, I'm really excited that we do get the chance to play in the Big Ten Championship on December 19th. So we're still in the fight, which is great. But those of you who know me know that I am even more excited that we get to showcase Sean Springs, a Buckeye football alum tonight, and the work that he's doing with two of our engineering faculty members to better protect our athletes and military personnel. This is gonna be a really fantastic conversation. So before we kick things off officially, I just want to remind everyone, if you need access to closed captioning services, there should be a closed captioning button right at the bottom of your screen. I also want to thank those of you who submitted questions in advance. During the second half of our conversation today, we will take the questions from the audience. So if you didn't turn in something in advance and you think of a great question while you're listening tonight, please use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. It looks like somebody's already entered a question. So way to go, way to, way to get ahead of the game. Speaking of questions and games, why don't we get into a little bit of Buckeye spirit here um, as we wait for the next time we can play that state up north. I, I'd, I'd love to kick off with some football trivia around the big game. So first of all, as of today, December 10th, I want to know how many days has it been since the last time that state up north beat our beloved Buckeyes in football? So go ahead and, and vote on your answer here. Don't worry, you won't get tackled if you don't know the right answer. <laughs> just take a guess. I wanna see how many Buckeye football fans. Um, we'll, we'll give just a few more minutes in case anybody wants, else wants to participate. We're getting some great participation right now. We'll see how many of you Buckeyes know your real Buckeye stuff here. Okay, well, bonus points to those of you who know the actual day, which was the last time they won, which was November 26th, 2011. So if you can believe that, that would be 3,302 days since the last time those Wolverines beat us. I really like that number. That's a number I wanna keep seeing going up and up. And it looks like um, some of you out there did know the answer. So cheers to you. And, and, and we'll just keep our fingers crossed that we're gonna run that number higher and higher over the next few years. So there, hopefully everybody can see how we voted on that one. Let's take another look. With all the schedule changes this year in the football season, it reminds me of what I thought was a pretty significant change when they decided to move that the big game from the weekend before Thanksgiving to where it stands now. So who can remember? I am going to um, launch another question here. Let's take a look at... This one, who can remember the last time that we played the game against the Michigan the weekend before Thanksgiving? Let me go ahead and launch that poll so you can weigh in. Put your thinking caps on. I'm gonna get this question launched here. Just one moment, having a little bit of issue here. Okay, let's take a look at that second question here. When was the last time that we played Michigan the weekend before Thanksgiving. And I don't know about you, but it felt like a pretty big shift. We had to sort of rejigger some of our holiday activities over Thanksgiving weekend when they made that change. Seems like some of you are pretty knowledgeable, pretty much remember the answer to that one. Just a few more moments. And okay, let's take a look at the answers there. So, Way to go. You guys got this one right. 2009. So it's been 11 years. When I was looking back into this, I thought it was more recently than that. But time and change, as we know, it's not just a line from our alma mater and we just keep playing the game. We just keep rolling. So now I am excited to turn things over to the person that we consider the head coach of the College of Engineering. Dean Williams, and he's going to talk to us a little bit about why the college is uniquely situated to partner with entrepreneurs and other companies. Dave? Okay, uh, Laura, thank you so much. And 
Uh, welcome to all of you. Uh, appreciate your joining us and particularly our speakers today. As Laura said, uh, why are we in the college particularly well positioned in order to be able to partner with companies? Uh, and the answer is because we know how to do that. And in fact, of all the hundreds uh, of engineering colleges across the nation, we are in the top five for partnering with companies to carry out cutting edge research that aids the companies, uh, helps them develop new products and indeed uh, helps people develop new companies. Uh, so we know how to do this within the college in the last five years, 25 new companies have been created and are still operating from our faculty, our staff and our students. So partnerships with industry, uh, they are in our blood in the College of Engineering. Uh, but without further ado, let me introduce the star of today's uh, uh, meeting, Sean Springs. Sean is the founder and CEO of Winpact, a Virginia-based technology and material science company that creates and produces best-in-class solutions designed to reduce impact-related injuries. That could be useful for a dean too. Prior <laughs> to becoming an entrepreneur, Sean spent 13 seasons playing football in the NFL, uh, seven with the Seattle Seahawks, five with the Washington Redskins, and the final season with the Patriots. But we Buckeyes, of course, best remember Sean as a member of the OSU football team, where he was a two-time academic All-Big Ten athlete and named the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year in 1996. Sean, welcome. How you doing, Dean Williams? I'm glad to be here. This is awesome. And I look forward to talking to all the alumni and... Um, uh, this is this is great. Thank you. Um, unfortunately, you know the team up north decided that they uh, didn't want to play <laughs> us Buckeyes, and um, but that's okay because we're we're going to play in the Big Ten championship game, and hopefully that leads to the national championship game. And and I can tell you, um, we got the right team to do it, uh, led by Justin Fields and a talented offense and some young. Uh, stud players on defense. I'm excited to see how far we can go this year. I believe Coach Day is going to do some amazing things. He's He's been great since he's been here. Uh, I'm just happy to be able to talk to um, my alumni of Ohio State because I, I, I truly am biased because the university has done so much for for me and I told Laura I would I would start off talking about my Ohio State experience and talking about you know what the university means for me and and just some of the things that happened. I wore my lucky sweatshirt today. I, I had this sweatshirt almost 20 some years as Ohio State football sweatshirt because that's where it started for me. It started over on on campus over Woody Hayes where a young kid coming from the Washington DC area. I had a lot of history with Ohio State because my father Ron was a captain there at Ohio State. So I used to go up and watch games as a young young boy. But finally, um, when I was old enough and uh, good enough, I was awarded a scholarship at Ohio State. And, and, and I, it seems like yesterday, uh, I was the fourth on the depth chart in the back of the room thinking I was gonna never play at Ohio State. And it, and it eventually became a, a star uh, Big Ten defensive player of the year and a great player there. But the lessons I learned while playing at Ohio State um, has led me to be able to accomplish some amazing things on and off the field. Obviously playing 13 years in NFL was a great experience, but my post career and what I've done has been, um, has been even a, a, a more exciting and fun ride. But one of the experiences I wanted to share uh, with you is why I wear this sweatshirt because you know, <laughs> Michigan week or the school up north week is, is the only time that, you know, as a football player at Ohio State, nothing else mattered, right? You know, we we knew when you walked into the Woody Hayes that that clock said either it started at the end of the year, 365 days to the end of the Michigan game from the year before, 365 days, 364 days till you played that school up north. And that's something that we focused on. And for me, it was like, you know, everything and for all the players and uh, it, it was everything. So um, I had some great experience, but it's the only time I've ever got scored on in, in the shoe, but it just built character and just made me mad and we went on to win the Rose Bowl. But I, I just had some great experiences in that stadium and, um, and excited to tell you more about my company, Winpack. And we're going to start off by rolling uh, a little video, a short video, and then I get into my company and tell you more about 
what I'm doing now. Laura, we're gonna play the video or not? We sure are, it's coming. <laughs> okay. I played 13 years in the NFL. My father played nine years, and now my son's playing college. So for me, it's important to try to make the game safer. The NFL has given a lot of entrepreneurs who have great ideas an opportunity to give back. At Wimpac, we've won two awards from the NFL for safety equipment. It goes beyond the financial support, just having access to some of the best medical professionals in the world, giving you insight to build better technology and better solutions was invaluable. Our technology is a unique combination of custom foam and controlled airflow. It's soft on low and medium impacts, and when you hit it, it tightens up. Leave these gaps in here for airflow. I believe we have a solution that can help address the high impacts that you see on kickoff, as well as the repeated every play impacts offense alignment and defense alignment experience. We work with the helmet manufacturers to come up with a unique solution for their particular helmet. As an athlete, I understand the importance of safety, but I also understand the importance of fit, feel, and comfort. I feel great to know that I have an opportunity to give back. My aim is to make the game safer for the next generation of athletes, whether it's my kids or the players who came behind me. Thanks, Caleb, for sharing that. And that's just one part of our business. So uh, that was our crash cloud technology, but to tell you more about our company, uh, I'm CEO and founder. We are based out of Northern Virginia and the company is called Winpact. We like to say we're a technology and a materials data company. And you'll learn more about why we say material data from Dr. Galat and Dr. C. Jeremy to, after I speak today. But we focus on analysis and design and integration of impact protective solutions. And we work collaboratively with our host brands in automotive, sports, um, the Department of Defense, and we work with those guys to look at how they're defining or developing their products or solutions that actually save lives every day. So some of the things that we're working on saves lives from working on ballistic impacts and padding systems for the U.S. Army and the soldiers, where not only were we able to uh, have a padding solution to improve safety of a soldier, but we have actually incre increased the standard because of our material data and our process. Working with, in the sports space, working with companies like Evo Shield and Under Armour and the NFL uh, on baseball helmet products to uh, football helmet products and working to make the game safer, not only for the professional sports, but for the youth. Um, our technology is really powered by the data uh, our material data and working with uh, Ohio State and Dr. Galat uh, has been a, a dream come true in the engineering. And the reason why I, I tell people all the time why we've had so much success at Winpac is because of our material data and working with Dr. Galat and Dr. C. But not only does it stop there, we work with the Center of Design, Manufacturing, Engineering, Dr. Hederick and those guys over there. So for me, it was important to uh, not only have, you know, the commercial space where we're working with some of the smartest minds in the commercial space and they understand like companies in the automotive space or sports space or, or defense, like the Army Research Lab, but I was able to leverage the knowledge of guys like uh, and all the scientists that we have at Ohio State. Um, I tell you what it's been, it's been a great experience to, you know, walking on campus. I never thought that, you know, passing the engineering building or seeing West Campus that the CDME and all those things was over there because I never knew what was going on. And as I start to develop our company out and build the company out further, I realized that we have some of the best world-class scientists that can help <laughs> uh, this help me just expand our knowledge, our business and everything. I, I like to tell people all the time, there's the MITs and Harvards of the world who spin out companies. But what we're doing at Ohio State and how Ohio State collaborates with Wimpac and, and, and thousands of other country, uh, companies, uh, it's been amazing in helping our growth and different things like that. And um, it's just been a, a tremendous opportunity. And I wish that we everybody can have the same experience that I've had working with the, the network of engineers at Ohio State. And, and when you think about the amazing things that Dr. Galat and Dr. Seed are doing, um, this process of collecting or understanding data that Dr. Galat is going to show you guys that we're going to lead into has been amazing because without data, 
uh, or the level of understanding the material, we couldn't be, we wouldn't be able at WinPAC, my group of engineers and our team wouldn't be able to do some of the things that we've been able to do. Um, so I'm, I'm truly excited and I'm truly honored to be continue to work with those guys. And it, the funny thing is I, I actually had the school of engineering and, and visiting those guys more than I go over to the Woody Hayes these days. So, um, I'm excited uh, and, and I look forward to any questions and, and, and listening to Dr. Galat and, and, and Dr. C. Uh, thank you, Sean. And uh, let me lead off with a few questions uh, before we get to the Ohio State faculty and we'll open it up for everybody's questions at the end. And of course, you should be in the College of Engineering because there's much more happening now than is happening over <laughs> at Woody Hayes. Uh, so, uh, uh, well, tell us a bit more about WinPAC. What are your short and long-term goals for the company? Well, my short-term goal was, it was born out of desire to, you know, improve safety in football, right? Then I quickly realized, uh, Dean Williams, that safety is something that goes beyond just what we're seeing in just football or, or sports in general. Um, automotive, there's thousands of car accidents or millions of car accidents every year and people are injured and and, and, and hurt, then there's, you know, defense and what we're seeing in the military. So our, our, our data and our applications and our solutions that we can create solves for a lot of different solutions. So our short term was to say, how do we look at improving football helmets? And our long term is to, the, to be evolved into a company that understands data and, and can create novel solutions for a lot of different industries. Okay, well, uh, you mentioned that your work translates to other applications such as car crashes. Uh, and protecting people in high impact areas. Can you tell us some more potential uh, or current applications uh, uh, which your work would translate into? Yeah, so I mentioned the, the baseball helmets and catcher's masks that we have in sports. But when you start to think about understanding the level of uh, material and how it deforms or how it's impacted and how it works over a lot of different strain rates, I learned from hanging out with Dr. Galat, all these different strain rates, it gives us the ability to look at virtually anything that uh, the human can maybe bump into or needs to be protected. So when you think about it, we look at things from uh, chest protections, from ballistic impacts to door panels for uh, vehicles or hair resting vehicles to, um, God, Lee, that we've been approached by, even two years ago, we were approached by a company that wants to deliver packages through drones every 30, every 30 minutes, right? So you look at uh, logistics and things like that. So right now our, our focus has been on defense and sports, but we, we know that in the future that we're gonna expand it to a, a broader uh, applications. Yeah, and in addition to the NFL, uh, uh, yeah. the US Department of Defense is interested. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? So two years ago, the U.S. Department of Defense put out an RFP uh, to improve the ballistic impact uh, for soldiers, uh, the, the advanced combat helmet and the enhanced combat helmet. And after 18 companies applied, uh, and after year one, there was only one company standing that, that got awarded year two, and that was WIMPAC. And I, and I credit a lot of that success because our ability to... Um, to understand and take our, our, our material data, understand materials and put it and run advanced models. And, and we were able not only to improve the helmet, but essentially influence a new standard. So now we put ourselves in position to be the padding solution for the military, hopefully for the next five to 10 years. Well, that's certainly a real long-term possibility for you. Yes. Sean, thank you very much. Uh, let, let me now turn to the Ohio State faculty with whom you've been uh, interacting and who you've uh, uh, spoken so highly about. And I'd like to start by introducing uh, Amos Gillat, Professor of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering and Director of the Dynamic Mechanics of Materials Laboratory. Uh, Amos. Hello. So let me share my screen here. Hello everybody, my name is Amos Gilad and I'm a professor of mechanical engineering. Uh, I've been to us in Ohio State for many, many, many years. I came at 1982 and at that time uh, there was a different department, Department of Engineering Mechanics. And I was a professor there and then 
in one of the reorganization of the college, we joined uh, mechanical engineering. And, uh, and over the years, I developed a, a lab. It's the Dynamics Mechanics of Material Lab. And in that lab, we are uh, studying materials, how they deform and how they fail. And, uh, and initially, it was a pure scientific study because at those times, uh, the industry did not use to use that data that much. But over the years, especially in the last 15 years, uh, computers capabilities and speed have become such and also development or in numerical methods that uh, today's people are doing, uh, they're designing products by using the computer. So they simulate the product and how it behaves when you use it and they optimize the design and the materials that they are using um, uh, with a computer, with, it's called finite element uh, uh, programs. And uh, those simulation programs, uh, it's mathematics, but they have materials models inside them. And the material models represent the material within the simulation. And in order to the simulation to be accurate, the material model has to be accurate. And what we do in our lab, the mission of our lab, you can see here on the screen, is material testing in support of the development and validation of material models used in numerical simulation of applications and manufacturing. And we are talking mostly about deformation and failure. Uh, the lab has been supported uh, for many years uh, by the government and by industry and with the government, with the FAA for many, many years and also NASA for many, many years. And the picture here shows one example and that's a simulation of a jet engine. Um, uh, the jet engine has to be designed such that when there is a problem and something breaks inside, the, all the, the fragments has to be contained within the engine so they don't uh, damage other parts of the airplane. And uh, there is a lot of effort that is done uh, in the design of the engine that it will be safe. So this is one example of how simulations uh, can help to design a better jet engine. And as you can see on the left over here, uh, the problem exists. This is actually failure that happened in the Southwest uh, airplane uh, not too long ago. Another example that we have, we work with many automobile companies and in automobile companies, uh, we work with the, with the people that design uh, the crush resistant of the of the of the car so uh, here i can show you in the next one you can simulate the whole car in the computer for impact and you will see in a moment how and then you can compare it once you design the car you can compare it with the actual impact that happens now many years ago in the development of a car, you had to do like 10 or 12 uh, prototypes and they crushed the prototype and they tried to understand what happened. And then they modify it a little bit and try again and so on. Today, you can, uh, you can design uh, the whole car in the computer. And then uh, when they build the car, it basically, uh, it, it behaves exactly like the computer predicted. So even little things like the number of buildings and the shape and so on uh, 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 is designed in, in, in the, by using the computer. 
So within those programs again, we, in our lab, we take little coupons of specimens from the material that the car is made of, and we load them in different ways. And from the data that we generate, the material models, the mathematical equations that go into those models are being developed. I can show you another project that we have been involved with NASA, and that's uh, in, during the after the space shuttle Columbia accident. And uh, the accident was when a piece of foam hit at the leading edge of the space shuttle and made a hole inside. And we participated in the investigation after that. And we tested in our lab, actually, the leading edge of the wing is made out of a special material. It's a carbon-carbon composite material. And we tested that material in our lab and the foam also that, uh, that uh, hit it. Initially, no one believed that the foam can make a, can fracture the leading edge. But then uh, uh, during the investigation, uh, experiment was done, like you can see here, that simulate what happened in space. And then using uh, the, materi the material data that we generated, uh, a simulation of that happens. And you can see how the simulation predicts very well the, what actually happened. Another example of measurements is a project we have with the dental school and we studied uh, the stresses around uh, dental implants. So the experiment is shown here, and we loaded the crowns that were, were placed on the, on the implant, and then you load it. And we have a special way uh, of measuring full field deformation. So we can see the, what happened, where are the stress concentrations, uh, and then by, you can uh, optimize the shape of the implant uh, to care to, so it will produce less stresses in the bone. That's uh, another example. So, so when we actually test the materials, uh, we test them with special, we test them at different rates and at different loading conditions and at different, uh, at different temperatures also. And uh, one of the unique, unique capability of our labs is the testing at different speeds. So for example, you can see on the left-hand side here, we test slowly with hydraulic machines. And then we can test very fast with the kind of gas guns that we have, that we are shooting a, 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 projectile to do different impacts. And then we also have an intermediate rate machine, which is a, it's a unique machine that we developed at Ohio State uh, several years ago, 10 years ago with support from NASA. And the machine is actually uh, at the hallway on the fourth floor of Scott's lab. And uh, there is a reason why it's in the hallway. I will not go into the whole details, but in general, it's made up of a hydraulic a part and then a very, very long bar along the, the wall of the hallway. And uh, this machine actually, we can test materials in the speeds that are related to what Sean is doing, uh, his products uh, with WinPack. So we actually test uh, a lot of the foams that Sean is using uh, in this machine, uh, which again, it is unique and there is no, to my knowledge, there is no other way to test those materials accurately at those speeds. Uh, here is, for example, some measurements data. So on the, um, on the top left here, you can see a test in which we are checking the stress concentration uh, due to a notch like that. And again, we have a technology, it's called digital image correlation that we can see uh, the stress concentration. Down here, we have a tension test 
that was done actually in, in, the, in the intermediate experiment machine in the hallway. And you can see here the deformation and the failure point over here. And, uh, and down here now, you can see a test in the hallway. And that's actually like one of the tests that we are doing for WIMPAC. I will run it again. But you can see the specimen is the little, the little piece here. That's the specimen. And then it's impacted by the, uh, by the hydraulic actuator. The speeds are about four meters per second, something like that. We also have a, a equipment uh, or instrument to test at higher speed. And you can see here in this video, So here we are talking about like 20 meters per second that we can test materials. In all of our testing, we are recording uh, the specimen with cameras and uh, we actually, before I talk about the cameras, there is a, another example here. We can also measure the temperature while the, the material is deformed. That's actually a very, very important part because uh, when materials deform, they generate uh, temperature and due to the increase in temperature, the properties are changing. So there is a coupling between the deformation and the temperature. And that's a very, very important part in the material models. So also we developed a, an experiment that we can measure the deformation here at the top and the temperature this is the same specimen. We measure the same time, the deformation and the temperature. And uh, this gives us a lot, a lot of data that can be used for the development of the material models. We have the fastest visual cameras in the world. We can take pictures at a rate of 5 million frames per second. That's unbelievable. That's a frame a picture every fifth of a millionth of a second. Well, you don't take 5 million pictures, you only take less than 200, but because the event is short, but you have to trigger the cameras at the right time. And those cameras are also a, a nice example of collaboration that we have with industry. And the cameras are very expensive. It's a quarter of a million dollar for a camera like that. And actually the Honda, company uh, gave us the fund to buy a couple of those cameras. We also have a very high speed thermal cameras and uh, thermal cameras are slower, but they are still very, very fast. And we can take up to 90,000 frame temperature measurements in a second. And, uh, and that's also, it's the fastest IR camera in the world. That's about $150,000. So you can see that we have a very, very advanced equipment and, um, and, uh, and, and all kinds of experiments that we developed over the years to characterize those materials. Sometimes we also test components. So for example, you can see here, that's, that's a, 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 a piece, it's a side, a, a bow in a car and actually it's being tested from impact from the side. And also here during this test, we have high speed cameras that we can uh, take recordings of everything that happens during the test. On the right side, on the right side, we have a peels test in which we are testing how good is the is the adhesive here between two, uh, two pieces that are connected together. And also here we have very, very accurate measurements that are being used in order to calibrate the material models. <clears throat> to summarize- uh, Amos, it, excuse me, could I uh, uh, break in please? Because we have to have Jeremy give it a few yeah. words about, about his work too. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm just saying that this is my last slide. Uh, we have, uh, we have uh, 
it's been supported by government agencies, uh, the FAA, and we are in contact with several, with many, many uh, industrial companies that we do research with. That's it, thank you. Thank you, Amos. And, and now let me introduce Jeremy Sai, the three-time alum, uh, bachelor's, master's, and doctorate from the College of Engineering, and a research associate professor in mechanical and aerospace engineering. Uh, Jeremy. Thanks, Dean Williams. Um, everybody, it's, a, it's an honor to talk um, uh, here today and talk about our collaboration with, with WinPact and, and, and Sean. And um, just, uh, just wanted to start off on a, on a personal note because this is an alumni event. Um, and, and I just wanted to, to say that really the university, um, there's, there's really never, there's never been a part, a time in my life when the university hasn't been a major part of it. And, um, you know, I just, just want to, you know, say I, I grew up here, uh, the east side of Columbus, uh, where I went to elementary school in the city and, um, you know, high school here. And, uh, and as, as Dean Williams mentioned, I have three degrees. I, I got my bachelor's and master's in the aerospace engineering department and a PhD in the mechanical engineering department. Um, and, and also, I, I am uh, also a, a student athlete as well, um, a much, much lesser known student athlete than our, uh, our, our star panelist here today. But, um, but I swam for the Buckeyes in the late 90s. Um, and really, the university means a ton to me. This is, this is a dream job uh, that I have now. It's, uh, it's really a wonderful place to work, and I'm, I'm thrilled to be here every day. Um, and honestly, if it isn't enough, in the, in the, in the College of uh, Medicine and the hospital system, uh, you know, I can never repay the debt that I owe to them because they, um, you know, I, we, we had some complications with our third child, our, our daughter, and uh, they, uh, she came 11 weeks early um, and they saved her life as well as my wife. So, so really the university um, has a special place in my heart. And, um, I just wanted to open up with that, uh, but just just to turn, we're here to talk about the, uh, the technical, the great technical work that Sean and and Windpact is doing, and uh, and really um, how I interact with that. I'm um, I, I, I'm essentially a collaborator with Amos. Amy, Amos and I have worked together now for um, boy, it's probably been about 14 years. Um, and uh, we've, we've been, uh, he was my mentor. He taught me a lot. I've learned a lot from, from him. And, and he gave a, a terrific overview of, of some of the capabilities and the applications, uh, both government and industry that, uh, uh, that, that we specialized in. Um, and really, I just wanted to underscore um, something that he said where you know, he was talking about uh, computer-aided engineering. And, and really, that's, that's the future of, of engineering, um, where you know, people like Sean will have a great idea for how you know, to solve a technical problem. And you know, that's to keep athletes safe or military personnel safe. And the, they try to implement, some of, implement and incorporate some of their ideas. Uh, it's much easier to do that in a virtual environment with simulations than it is to actually you know, fabricate prototypes and test it. And it doesn't matter if you're, you know, if you're testing a cell phone or, um, or something as complicated as a car or an airplane or an aircraft engine, all of those things, uh, all of these engineers that are developing these, these, um, um, uh, these complex systems are using computer-aided engineering. And we're really well placed at the DML Mel to, uh, uh, to help uh, analysts, uh, CAE analysts to, um, to do that. And the reason is, is because we have so much um, custom equipment to test over uh, a wide range of strain rates. And when I say strain rate, I mean, uh, how fast do you deform something? You know, you can, you can uh, essentially, we, you know, and, and Sean said this really well in, in his in his lead in that, you know, you know, you want to have a, a material that is soft uh, when it's uh, deforming slowly, so that you have a nice, comfortable fit for a helmet, or you want it to stiffen up when you hit it, right? So, 
So when you're at the at the low end, when you're just putting the helmet on and you have low strain rates, it's 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 much weaker. But then you want it to get stiffer and more rigid uh, as you hit it and and um, absorb as much impact energy as possible to the user. And um, so. So on the low end, on the low end, you have low strain rates. On the high end, you have high strain rates. And really, pretty much everybody along the spectrum of, um, of, of science from, you know, from one example would be dropping your cell phone on the ground on the low end of strain rate, all the way up to people studying meteors impacting, meteor strikes impacting uh, the Earth or other celestial objects. Uh, so, so all of these people need uh, material model data in order to act, to have any kind of confidence in their in their simulations, and honestly, you, you need to have that confidence level. You need to have that understanding of how your material is going to behave over this wide range of loading conditions, low strain rates all the way through high strain rates, uh, in order to to truly have confidence that your design is going to work the way you intended it to. Uh, and really, uh, uh, Amos gave a great. Um, um, overview of our capabilities, uh, our high-speed photography. We can take uh, video footage or a wide range of rates. Um, we can uh, test at low strain rates on hydraulic machines. He showed that custom intermediate apparatus, which, uh, which is in between the, uh, the, the high-end Hopkinson bar type tests and the low-end hydraulic tests. And that range is actually really difficult to, to test them. And primarily, that's why we're working with Sean is because of that custom one-of-a-kind uh, intermediate rate apparatus that we have in the hallway. Um, so he's working with us, and we're test we're testing his materials are primarily, and they're not all this, but primarily what we've tested for him in the past. We are starting to look at different materials because our relationship has grown and is growing actively. Um, but really, we're looking at viscous foam materials and. Viscous, by definition, means that it's it's time sensitive. It's 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 uh, history dependent. So, uh, if you deform it slowly, then it's soft. If you deform it fast, it stiffens up. And so, we need to test uh, uh, in that in that strain rate range, that intermediate strain rate range, because that's directly in the application range that that Sean is working in: athletic protection gear, uh, military protection gear. And if you think about it. Uh, you know, he, he has a, you know, you also throw um, automotive in there, but, but in the, you have the athletic guys, you think about two guys running at each other at a, doing at four, four forties and impacting each other. And you think yeah, that's, that's a lot of energy because you see it on the, on the screen in the NFL and in the, you know, the college, college football games. Uh, but if you think, if you really think about it, uh, that military application is much, much higher rates um, because those guys have helmets that are uh, absorbing impacts from uh, high velocity bullets or fragments. Uh, they're res you know, responding to uh, shock waves from, from blasts. Uh, so they're really kind of an order of magnitude um, higher. Um, but but we're, we're focusing in on Sean in that intermediate range. And there aren't very many labs uh, really in the world that can test there and get the quality data that we can because of um, because of the devices that Amos just showed, um, and really just to just to close, I I wanted to say um, a little something about working with Sean. Sean, it, it, working with Sean has been great. Um, he he's been a, a, like a terrific partner. Uh, he he has uh, he brings really great energy uh, to the problem, uh, and you know his uh, his energy is infectious. And, um, you know, he's got a real magnetic personality um, and he really, you know, he really wants results. And the other thing I really like about working with Sean is he's a big picture guy. You know, Sean is always thinking way down the road. He's, he's always, you know, he's not looking, he's not looking at solving the, the, the problem right in front of him. He's, he's planning for the future. And, and, and I, I enjoy talking to him about that because that's, that's that's what what interests me and and Amos. We 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 like we like doing new things and uh, doing new experiments and um, you know trying to do things more efficiently and better and 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 learning and growing. And I I think that's that's a good uh, you know uh, comparison to a, to a young athlete trying to get better. I mean that's you know, that's that's what that's what we're doing 
we're doing in, at, in the College of Engineering as well. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. And uh, thank you, Amos. Uh, great description of materials testing from uh, plane crashes to car crashes to football crashes. Uh, uh, so uh, I'd like to hand over to Laura now uh, so we can engage the audience and have uh, you uh, question uh, Sean or uh, Amos or Jeremy. Uh, Laura, thank you. Absolutely. And we've gotten some really good questions in advance, and I see some questions coming in through the Q&A. So feel free to enter those. Um, so we're, we're going to address these of all of our speakers tonight. I, 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 our first question that I'd like to pose comes in from two different alumni, Jacqueline Durst, who is a recent graduate of mechanical engineering, and also Ron Boucher, who's a graduate of our computer and information science area. And they, they both are asking about whether the helmet technology of Winpact would be affordable enough and translatable enough to either be purchased by schools and their athletic programs or used for things like bicycle helmets. So Sean, if you'd like to address that. Yeah, I can answer that. And uh, we work collaboratively with our clients. So we 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 aren't technically a helmet company. Uh, just think of us as um, the Intel inside, or we take that that data that <laughs> Dr. Galat has um, so nicely uh, described how we get all the strain rates and basically took it to a digital form. So basically we are foam agnostic. So we look at all different types of foams and the more and more foams we send up to Ohio State, the, the smarter we get around materials and how they perform. So when we're working in, in, in the sports space, we know that the foams or the materials used in sports maybe have to be affordable or working with our clients have to be a solution that's affordable because you can't charge the same price you charge for a football helmet that you would charge for a ballistic impact for a, um, for a soldier's helmet. So we're always looking at how we help when our clients uh, solve their solutions, whether it's you know reducing the weight, uh, reducing the cost, or making their just performance that much better. And, and, and you know it's funny because everyone says we're a football helmet company, but we like to tell you people we're we're more of a material data and technology company. We we collaborate with the, the brands to make their products better. That's a good point. That that brings us to a question that can't, comes in from Barry Kaplan, who asks if you've thought about working with construction. Yeah, so we we work with we got a German brand out of um, Germany, Uvex. So we work um, in construction. Anything that you think about, um, our focus started off in helmets, obviously, because that's in sports. But we we've been approached from construction uh, helmets to we work with car companies to. Um, Anyone you think of where the body can be affected or deformation of padding solutions. And it looks like a few more specific questions about Winpact. This is what I love about our alumni. They love the specifics. So right. this question is from Maxwell Wingert, who asks if either Winpact or Ohio State is doing any FEA simulations of foam microstructure. And if so, what approach you're using? So Sean, if you want to address this and then maybe <laughs> Amos, if this applies to work you're doing in the lab. Yeah, I, I know we do our, our data that we, our, our proprietary data that we get from Ohio State's lab is all used for simulations. And, and, and Dr. Galat talked about, and, and Dr. C talked about computer data simulations or model-based engineer. So I, I know Dr. Galat can answer the second part, but we, all our, our data goes into whether it's LS Donna, whether it's answers and any type of computer data simulations. I can't answer the other question, Jeremy or Dr. Galat, you can answer that one. I, I can answer, um, we use the material models that are inside the numerical code, like Abacus, LS Dyna, ANSYS. And uh, most of those models are not microscopic models. They are phenomenological. So they are more on the, uh, on the continuum scale. There is room uh, for uh, developing uh, models from the micro scale. But we are right now, we are not involved in this. I think that's a straight answer to that. If, if I could just chime in and uh, follow up a little bit that um, there, you know, Amos and I are experimentalists. So we, we, do, we do the experimental techniques. We do do some um, simulations, but 
um, primarily we're, we're doing experimental work. Um, but there are some folks even within our own department at MAE that are doing um, uh, work on research on that scale, like Professor Sohail Sograti is, is, is looking, um, looking at cell structures and uh, very um, you know, fine uh, geometric detail and uh, various structures from composites and um, you know foam cells. I don't know if he's actually looked at that, but uh, I think you can apply some of those techniques that he uses uh, in order to study that. So the, the, I think that you know, the short answer is, is it could be used. So, so speaking of how you approach the research, um, Jeremy and Amos, we have a question from Edward Herderick, who is wondering if you have looked at nature in any of your, to gather any information for your designs. So things like, he, he Edward specifically mentions different um, like mating rituals where animals bash their heads against other things to impress the female. Like, do you look at any of those kinds of things as you're doing the work you're doing in the lab? I don't think so. <laughs> no, I don't think so. We just, we just test materials that the companies need to, need information in their design. And uh, <laughs> no, no rituals, no nothing. <laughs> yeah, well, we don't do any rituals in the lab, but uh, <laughs> no many, no many rituals. <laughs> but um, I, I think that's a that's a really interesting um, question, though, and a very interesting point. And and that nature, nature has kind of gone through that natural optimization process to, um, you know, to, to essentially create uh, an, a specialized um, natural object to withstand whatever it's exposed to. Uh, if it's a ram hitting its head really hard on, um, you know, against another ram or whatever, then, uh, but, but, you know, this happens all of the time. But really, that's, that's a structural element. And I think, I think that kind of leads in a little bit to the previous question too about the cell structure. You know, these these natural uh, naturally optimized um, structure uh, geometries. Um, you know, you can you can model that if you can if you can discretize it numerically and apply a, a, a material model that you you know that that we. Um, you know, develop in the laboratory. I mean, you could actually conduct some um, some experiments on the end result geometry and uh, and try to validate the numerical model that you generated for it. So um, it's a really interesting concept. Uh, we haven't really ventured too much into that in our laboratory. Um, but um, I, I think the furthest thing we've done is probably some of the work we've done with the College of Dentistry. But but mainly they've been looking at uh, elements of uh, you know engineering elements like like the uh, uh, dental implants and the connection points and that that sort of thing. Laura, I, I would say we at Winpact at one time we we. I think I've been in a few lectures when they talked about the the woodpecker study when a woodpecker hits the head in rotation. I think, you know, that that probably influenced a lot of the cycling companies to start to companies like MIPS to start to look at the, just the rotation of a a padding solution, and that was probably based on one of the woodpecker studies. So I have heard about it, but you know, that's above my my pay grade. I haven't studied the animals yet. It's just interesting. You can find inspiration almost anywhere, I think, to solve design challenges. Um, so Sean, this question's for you. This is from Michael Mead, who is wondering if Winpact as a company is thinking about moving outside of personal protective equipment to safety products for any field that requires impact protection. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's what we and that's we 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 think about the broader applications. And 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 a good thing about you know, working with Dr. Galat and Jeremy, when we when you have that data of of material and and you understand it to the, the strain rates and levels, we understand it. We have clients that come to us from all different industries. Um, you'd be surprised. <laughs> so it's the data or, or the material understanding of material that can be applied to any use or anywhere. Um, we use it for impact protection. Somebody else may use it for comfort and fit and feel or 
some other structural analysis on it. So I think our, our last question is actually a broader question that's come in from a few different sources, a few different alumni. And that is, um, if, if you could talk about, I think this is for all three of you, what do you see as the link between engineering and entrepreneurship? What is it that makes on engineers good entrepreneurs and how can engineers help entrepreneurs? Dr. Glott, you wanna start first or you want me to go first? Well, well I think it's solving problems. You see, what we teach in engineering is this is what you know, this is what you assume if you don't know. This is the problem. Uh, that's what needs to be done. Figure out a way to do it. And our, my, our classes are like that. And that's a good training for, for, for everyone. Uh, I can tell I'm teaching some of the basic courses like static dynamics and things like that. And one day a student come to my office, ask, started asking me questions and I saw immediately that he's, he's, he, he doesn't know what's going on. And I asked him, who are you? Why, I mean, tell me about yourself. And he, to, he told me that he's actually in the medical school. And I said, why are you taking the class? He said, because people told me that this class will teach me to think straight. And there is a lot of there is a lot of this. You see, the, the same qualities that you need in engineering, you need in order to run a business. That's what I think, no, Sean. Yeah, I, I would say for me, the problems when I when I when I first started off with Winpact, um, it, it was mind-boggling to me that you know that some of the smartest engineers and some of the smartest PhDs in the world weren't actually solving the problem like for football helmets. We know, we, we know, for me, it was like, how do I get the people like uh, Dr. Galah and Jeremy who understands deformation of materials? They might not have been thinking about football helmets, but they know about how materials work. Um, and, and, and they also, they, they might've been solving a problem from NASA or GM or somewhere else. And so when you start thinking about, thinking about solving some of the difficult, most difficult challenges, our, our, our scientists, Dr. Sire, Dr. Bolt, who's the father of interior vehicles at Ohio State, you talk about Dr. Hedrick and the guys at CDME looking at lattice structures, all these things that we're working in these different silos um, can solve some very difficult problems and quite frankly, you know, that's a challenge. The challenge is, is making sure that you get all the right people as an entrepreneur, getting them in a the room because they can solve the problem. So to answer your question, how engineering and um, entrepreneur come together, the most brilliant minds are probably working on something. If you, if you can find out a way or if you're an entrepreneur, you can figure out how to get these guys together to look at something different, just like what we went through this pandemic, you know, you, you, it is, everybody's focused on solving a problem, you know, you can hurry up and get a vaccine pretty quickly, right? So, and that's how I felt when I was thinking as an entrepreneur, I, I knew that I wasn't um, the smartest of the world at, at understanding how football players are impacted, but I knew that there's somebody in the world, when I talked to Jay, I was like, who in the world understands Material science. He said, call Jeremy, call Amos, <laughs> right? Right. So when you talk about solving problems, there are people that are doing it. They just might not be thinking about the problem. As an entrepreneur, I was just like, if I'm going to do something amazing, I have to have some of the smartest engineering and, and people in the world to help me solve the problem. So together you work together and, 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 and you grow something special. You got to have courage. But I got Dr. Galat, so he, he, I got famous Amos with me, so I'm okay. I think, just just okay. Follow, following Sean, that's a, a tough act to follow, but, but uh, you know, these two guys, I, I think, you know, just to follow up with, with what Amos said, yeah, problem solving is important. You have to solve a problem, but you also have to know kind of what the problem is. You know, you have to have the vision for what the next generation problem is. And uh, I think engineers are naturally inclined to, you know, to that. And so they're naturally inclined to, um, you know, being entrepreneurs. And uh, I also think that, uh, um, you know, in addition to just 
being a problem solver, there's a, a huge element is design. And we also teach them that as well. So they're designing the next generation of devices to solve whatever that problem is. And, and Sean mentioned courage. That's huge. You know, going out and doing it on your own is, is, is huge. You have, to, I mean, it's, it's a lot easier just to go and work for a company than it is to actually try to solve an extremely difficult problem, you know, yourself. But, you know, to get that courage, I think one thing that Sean, you didn't mention that you clearly have is passion. You know, you have that passion and, and, and you can, you know, you can really uh, work a room and, and pitch your ideas and, and make them, uh, you know, buy in, you know, and, and really say, hey, this guy, you know, he's on to something. I want to be part of that, you know, and, and I know, I, I know that that's something that I don't know if you can teach that, you know, that's kind of an <laughs> quality. So. Well, on that note, it's very clear that the three of you are passionate about the work that you're doing on the data, the lab, the testing side, and on the implementation side on the front lines of the company. So I just want to thank you, um, Sean, Amos, Jeremy, and special thanks to Dean Williams for having that conversation tonight. I always am really inspired when we hear the great stories about what happens when Buckeyes work together either on the field or off the field. There's more to put to life than football here. So thanks for sharing those stories. Laura, can I say one more thing real quick? Absolutely. And, and, and that's a testament to Dr. Dean Williams, you know, because every department of engineering at Ohio State, uh, and he mentioned it at the start of it, uh, they just open their arms and they and they work with these companies and I, and I know for Winpac it, it's been a great and I just I just love working with you guys so I'm pretty excited. Thanks, Dr. Williams. I wanted to mention that. Thank you, Sean. Appreciate it. Yeah. So if you are as excited as we were about this partnership and you are interested in supporting partnerships like this between the college and between entrepreneurial companies, there's a pretty easy way uh, that you can do that. You can text the word engineering to 91999 and that will give you a link where you have the option to make a donation to the college's priority fund. That fund um, actually supports a wide variety of initiatives around the college, including things like equipment for centers like this and getting students opportunities to partner in internships, all sorts of things. So I would encourage you to check that out. I definitely would also encourage you to continue to stay engaged with the college by following our social media channels. This is where, if you've been following our channels, you might've already read some of the stories about WinPact or about the research that Amos and Jeremy are doing, or even most recently, we had a story about our next Dean of the college, Dr. Ayana Howard, who was joining us in March of 2021. So, Following these channels is a really great way to be among the first to know the latest news that's going on here and also feel a little bit of pride among our alums. So I would encourage you to do that if you don't already. I also want to encourage you to take advantage of a little bit of Buckeye spirit that we've launched this year with our party in a box program. So as you can see on your screen now, all those lovely little spirit items with the college logo, we send those to you in a box. The cost is $25 and those funds actually do go back to the college's priority fund. So there's the website is there. Check it out, maybe for the Big Ten Championship or maybe for an upcoming basketball game or maybe you've got a graduate to celebrate. Um, we'd, we'd love to send some Buckeye cheer your way. I also would like to remind you that for those of you who are participating tonight, we will be emailing you a copy of a roster of fellow attendees who wanted to share their contact information because they know that Buckeye nation is very strong and they want to network with you. So my call to you is when you get that roster, open it up, take a look at it, maybe reach out to somebody on the list. You never know when one link could make a, a big difference in your personal per or professional life. So please take advantage of that. And lastly, if you want to learn anything else about what you heard today, or maybe you have questions about how you can take the next step in staying connected with the college or supporting a cause that you're interested in here, please reach out to me directly. My information is on the screen there, and I would love to get you the information you're looking for, or put you in touch with people who can help you take that next step. So all that being said, 
Thank you again for joining us tonight. I hope you have a very healthy and happy holiday season and go Bucks. Goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.